Today's story that we're going to read is called The Buffalo Hunters. This is a picture of a buffalo. Another word for buffalo is bison. One Native American tribe that counted on the bison for survival was the Lakota Sioux. The Lakota Sioux are a Native American tribe that lived on the Great Plains in the areas that are now South Dakota, Wyoming, and Montana. Tens of millions of these bison once roamed the Great Plains, but by the early 1900s they were in danger of dying out completely. For many years, though, people have worked hard to save the bison from near extinction, and today hundreds of thousands of bison exist on farms and protected areas such as national parks. They are no longer endangered. We begin our story today with two brothers, Running Fox and Black Eagle. Running Fox felt the tingle of butterflies in his stomach as he sat on his horse. It was his first time hunting for bison with his tribe, and he was excited and nervous. He hoped to be able to hunt well and make his tribe proud. He saw his brother Black Eagle smile and nod at him as if to say, You will be all right, Running Fox. Running Fox smiled a tight, nervous smile. The butterflies in his stomach felt like they were multiplying, and he could feel his heart pounding. Running Fox knew how important the bison were to his people, the Lakota Sioux. The bison were their source of life. They depended on the bison meat for food, the bison skin for leather and clothing. They even used the bones of the bison to make tools. Running Fox remembered his father teaching him about the bison. The bison are sacred to our people, my son, he would say. That is why we honor their spirit and thank them for giving us their lives to help our people survive. We have always followed the great bison herds. Before we had her horses, we followed the herds on foot. But now, Running Fox thought proudly, we are great horsemen who can keep up with the bison when they try to escape. We kill only as many as we need to live. We never kill so many that the herds disappear. If the bison disappear, so will the Lakota people. Just then, Chief Red Cloud, the Lakota leader, gave the first signal. Running Fox knew exactly what to do. He and half the hunters rode down to the bottom of the hill behind the herd so the bison would not see them. They positioned themselves directly in the path the bison would need to take to escape when Chief Red Cloud's group charged down the hill. After giving Running Fox time to get into position, Chief Red Cloud, still atop the hill, whistled sharply. At once, his hunters kicked their heels against their horses' sides and charged down the hill towards the bison. Most of the herd did not even notice the horsemen coming, but a few bulls, the huge, shaggy male bison at the edges of the herd, were on guard. They saw the riders, lifted their great horn heads, snorting loudly. Then they turned and galloped away from the approaching hunters. In a matter of moments, the entire herd was moving, picking up speed as the bulls sensed danger. The skilled horsemen kept their balance and directed their horses by using pressure from their knees and feet, leaving their hands free for bows and arrows. Ay, ay! the Lakota shouted, and the frightened bison ran away from the hunters even faster, right along the pathway the hunters had predicted. That was when Running Fox and the other hunters came riding out from behind the hill. Seeing them, the bison did not know where to go. By this time, the hunters were riding along the edges of the herd, shooting arrows. Running Fox was so secure on his horse, he felt like his horse was a part of him, that the horse's legs were his legs. Nervousness forgotten. Running Fox fired one arrow and then another. A big bull bison fell to the ground. After a few more bison had fallen, Chief Red Cloud shouted, We have enough! He signaled to the hunters to stop. Running Fox and the other hunters turned back, allowing the remainder of the bison to thunder off. Chief Red Cloud rode over to Running Fox, put his hand on the young man's shoulder, and said, Let us pause and thank these bison for giving themselves so that we might live. After a few minutes, Chief Red Cloud said, Now you are truly a Lakota. Running Fox grinned for just a moment, and then he remembered to look serious and all grown up. Changing his expression, he nodded solemnly to the chief and thought, Chief Red Cloud has honored me by noticing what I did today. Think about that word, solemnly. It said in the text, changing his expression, he nodded solemnly. That means he was very serious. Think about what just happened with the bison. Do you see how the chief would be very serious? 
Chief Red Cloud has honored me by noticing what I did today, said Running Fox. Think about that word solemnly as you listen to the rest of the story. Later, at the very end of the story, you're going to hear that word again. Meanwhile, the bison moved on, slowing down as the immediate danger disappeared, leaving some of the men prepared to prepare the fallen bison. Chief Red Cloud signaled Running Fox to join a group of hunters who were following the bison to see where the herd was headed. Running Fox was honored to be asked to track the herd. He rode proudly behind the herd with the other more experienced hunters. As they continued on, Running Fox suddenly realized the herd is heading straight toward the Iron Horse. Train tracks had been built right through the middle of the Lakota hunting grounds, and recently locomotives have started charging through them, hissing steam and carrying train cars with passengers. Later, just as the train tracks came into view, the riders came to a sight so shocking that they all stopped riding and stared. On the ground before them lay dozens of bison. Someone had killed them and taken only the best parts of the meat, leaving behind the rest of the bison. Running Fox asked a hunter next to him why would someone kill in this way? Don't they know that wasting a bison is wrong? The hunter did not answer. Running Fox turned to his chief. Chief Red Cloud's face looked as angry and as stormy as his name implied. The men who made the Iron Horse did this, he said. It is not enough that they have come into our country, made our hunting grounds smaller, forced us into different lands. Now they hunt the bison for sport, just for fun, only taking certain parts and leaving the rest to rot. They threaten our people's lives by killing so many. If all the bison die, so will our people. We cannot survive without bison. Remember that word solemnly. Look at Chief Red Cloud's face. As you listen to the next part of the story, think about that word solemnly. Running Fox could see Chief Red Cloud's eyes blazing with anger as he spoke. I have tried to tell them, the chief continued solemnly, but they refused to listen. He turned looked right at Running Fox and said, We have spoken peacefully with them, and we will do so again. I hope this time they will listen. Otherwise, we may have further conflict with them. Chief Red Cloud turned and led his men back the way they had come. Now, we're going to talk about the story just a little bit. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and when I set the timer, I want you to talk with your team. What was the main topic of this read aloud? I'm going to set the timer for 30 seconds, and I want you to talk with your team about what the story was all about. The topic of this read aloud was about bison, or buffalo, and how the buffalo were hunted by the Lakota Sioux. Now, for the next question, I want you to think, why were the bison so important? Think about what the Lakota Sioux used the bison for. I'll set the timer for another 30 seconds. Talk with your team. Remember, the Lakota Sioux only killed the bison that they needed. They were considered sacred animals and necessary to the Lakota Sioux because they were their main source of food, clothing, shelter, and tools. For this next question, I want you to think about that word that we spoke about, solemnly. Think about what Chief Red Cloud looked like when he saw the bison that had been killed because of the Iron Horse. Remember, the Iron Horse was a nickname 
for a steam locomotive or a train. So your question, why did Chief Red Cloud speak solemnly about the presence of the Iron Horse? You have 30 seconds to talk with your team. Chief Red Cloud spoke solemnly about the presence of the Iron Horse because he felt the people who created the Iron Horse were destroying the bison and their hunting grounds. The Lakota Sioux were forced to relocate or move to different and smaller areas of land.